Hello, I'm going to do a short video on funerary symbols and with a focus um, on my uh, hometown of Sydney. And uh, they connect all across the world, but we'll, I'll be using Sydney as a uh, base. So we have the Lands Department um, building in Sydney directly across from Macquarie Place. Uh, many statues of important explorers etc and one of them is Alan Cunningham an explorer a botanist and um, important person in the establishment of uh, botany of uh, Sydney Royal Botanical Gardens now Botanic Gardens and well now we have Central Station which was built uh, after his passing but it's important because uh, Central Station Sydney was formerly uh, Sand Hills Cemetery. So anyway, we see the station. He's uh, one of these types of um, uh, later than the colonial period, but still in very much in the vein of uh, colonial architecture at the time. Uh, again, one of these build buildings with m multiple symbols uh, across it. So one of the exits uh, here, we see the ionic columns. Uh, for instance, also the colonnades, which are Doric, and so. Uh, the, bringing the three Greek orders together. But the important point is here we have this one plaque um, showing how Central Station was formerly on the Devonshire or Sand Hills, uh, Devonshire Street or the Sand Hills Cemetery. Cemetery. And when the uh, Central Station was built, the graves had to be moved. Now amongst those graves was the uh, remains of Alan Cunningham, but now we're in the Sydney Botanical Botanic Gardens to which he was so important in the uh, early years and the obelisk there, there compa uh, contains the remains of Alan Cunningham. Another interesting point in regards to this obelisk is that it's been moved from its original location. It happens so often that um, I'll, I'll do a video on it in the near future because it's not just an Australian thing, it's very much around the world these uh, key obelisk key markers but the important point here is again that uh, this was uh, formerly a uh, cemetery, a lot of the bodies, uh, those who could afford it, they were removed and they were moved to the new necropolis or the uh, Rookwood Cemetery, Cemetery, Rookwood Necropolis, which is then on the outskirts of the city. And just down the road from um, Central Station, we have Mortuary Station, uh, which is also called Regent Street Station. Now, this station was designed by uh, the architect James Barnett, who's also called the father of colonial architecture, hugely important on not just New South Wales, but uh, across the nation, really. And he designed this station, and the purpose of his station, Mortuary Station, was the dead were brought here, uh, put on the train, and then the train was taken to the Rookwood Necropolis, the larger uh, cemetery. Uh, many many symbols here on this building especially to the esoteric or uh, or, or, or a cult world I think um, Freemasons odd fellows etc and but more especially it has many references to death and uh, well, well quite a few pardon um, from the columns the uh, ch choices of the decorations of uh, the um, Carvings on the gate, uh, these are all very much connected to f funerary, to funerals, and to death. Uh, for instance, on these columns, and you'll see these, these plant motifs now, uh, they're much stylized, but they're uh, acanthus. So just under the roof of a ridge on the columns themselves and across the uh, center of a building off to the middle left uh, there, uh, this is all a canvas, and a canvas has a long history of being connected with funerals, going back to the origins of the Corinthian order, and uh, all the bell jar and uh, the maiden uh, who the, the girl who died before her age. Connections to the Weeping Virgin, uh, also the broken column being one of these key Masonic symbols connected to uh, death, especially to an early death. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the key points um, here is that mortuary station built for the dead uh, to uh, transport them to the new necropolis uh, Rookwood Cemetery and the building itself having, uh, especially through a canvas, but through, as we'll see in a moment, the uh, winged hourglass. So here we see the gates 
and you can see the hourglass with wings and above you can also see the sun rays and the all-seeing eye uh, that's um, another well, quite blatant um, reference to uh, the occult world now even on the decorations on these uh, pillars of the gates uh, they are a canvas as well which again it's a very ancient connection to uh, especially in funerals um, ancient Greeks uh, through to Romans and much later but uh, Masonic tracing board the hourglass so this is a more of a modern board but uh, earlier pictures will even have the hourglass with the wings now the connection to the scythe and the coffin is another symbol of death um, in movies uh, entertainment any sort of art which features this will often have the uh, hourglass it's one of these key features the concept of time now what does the hourglass really mean so it's you have the sands of time time is limited the wings time is flying past so it's a it's a reference to to mortality uh, a reference to while you're alive live well as well you know to you know time will slip away from you time will fly away from you. Just a short distance from the famous Bondi Beach is the Waverley Cemetery uh, built up right against the cliff and it's a historic um, many important figures are buried there and the cemetery itself of course naturally is uh, full of uh, funerary symbolism especially connected to uh, the esoteric uh, and most notably Freemasonry uh, so we have the obelisk but what we also have is many of these uh, stones which f are in the form of a broken column I recently did a shorter video sort of touching on some of these things so um, depending on what source you use but uh, Typically, so the broken column is more connected to a life shut, uh, life cut short, um, especially in Prince Hall lodges, things like that. But um, you'll also see it as a standard symbol on f uh, Freemason tracing boards. Uh, the hourglass, the coffin, the scythe, and the broken column are very much connected to death and mortality. For instance, here we see the, uh, the Virgin, the broken column and uh, connections to death even the hourglass there so uh, they sort of all relate and in, in, interconnect in some uh, very interesting ways so the broken column usually depicted as a fallen Corinthian column and that gives us another link to some other uh, funerary rituals and traditions so here we see a, a Corinthian order column of the last of the three of the Greek orders to be introduced and the leaves there are of the campus most notably and so the connections with the Corinthian column and the campus go back at least to the uh, 5th century BC and the origins of the Corinthian uh, order of architecture uh, a young maiden of marriage age dies before her time her nurse puts her belongings into a crater or a bell-shaped jar she places a tile on the basket the, the jar to protect it a little bit longer um, the, the nurse of the young lady who passed was unaware but there was an acanthus root growing under the basket and as uh, spring and summer come the acanthus took bloom now the, the shape of the bell jar the tile forced these uh, acanthus sleeves to bend and with with them that was the, the inspiration for the um, Greek sculptor architect Callimachus to create the Corinthian order of architecture and still to this day acanthus is a funerary plant um, even in the uh, standard texts you know you don't need to look into the esoteric texts it's still very much connected with uh, funerals and with death but it has very ancient um, origins and actually they go much further back than the Greek but uh, State Library of New South Wales on the interior here's another example of the Corinthian order and those leaves are uh, acanthus leaves um, as told in the story uh, told by Vitruvius and some uh, earlier writers regarding the origins of that this is important because we'll come back again to uh, mortuary station by Edmund uh, sorry by James Barnett father of colonial architecture in Australia and there are many references to the campus here are just uh, 
one of them, but the columns that's uh, across for the whole of the building now. Um, it's a little bit stylized, uh, as often is. So, for instance, in the Department of Education building, um, next to the, the Lands Department building with the Alan Cunningham statue, we have many references to the acanthus leaf. Uh, decorator's assistant, this was basically the Bible for um, uh, early arts and craft movement and so on. And uh, again, uh, acanthus scrolling, acanthus leaves are very important uh, within this book. Many, many pages on it and the various forms. So they're, again, stylized over time. And so we'll come back to Waverley Cemetery and you can see here broken columns and obelisks and these are another important reference to uh, f uh, symbols of mortality and one of those key ones is here we see this obelisk and uh, on the right side the close-up of the inverted torch so it's you know, it's a torch turned upside down now an upside down torch will uh, ex extinguish but by having it upside down it's a symbol of eternal life so with a torch upright um, living mortality torch upside down and it's also a combination of the fasces in a way uh, but that's something else but um, so uh, occult references even obelisk so the Kayama obelisk this is a survey marker um, but there's a, a little plaque there and it has some nice information regarding the important so um, obelisks symbolize rays of sunlight they were popular in victorian cemeteries particularly in non-conformist burial grounds where geometric forms were preferred to religious symbols such as crosses as an and angels geometric forms non-conformists you know that's uh one plus one is two there and of course the one of the obelisks here in waverley cemetery and geometric form non-conformist and the compass and square so just a quick uh, I'll leave it off here but he's just an introduction to some of the uh, uh, funerary symbols that are used and how they apply also to uh, tracing boards and architecture both ancient and even going back a few centuries so uh, really important one there is a canvas uh, to spot the the, out, the winged hourglass and these other symbols as well but a uh, canvas is one of these ones really worth focusing on and so with that I'll uh, bring the video to an end hope you enjoyed and have a good one